Welcome back, Musa Issa here, and today we're going to be talking about my top 10 favorite movies of all time. If you follow me on TikTok, you'll know that I went through my top 100 favorite movies of all time, but I just want to talk about my top 10, because these are my favorite movies of all time. These are the movies that I idolize. These are the movies that I love. Like, I love these movies so much. I just want to, I just want to express how much I love these movies. I just want to talk about why I love these movies. Just before I get started, don't forget to follow my Instagram for quick movie reviews of my stories. And don't forget to follow my TikTok where I post daily content on there. And don't forget, my name is Musa Asa. One day you're going to see my name plastered throughout every single movie poster in the U.S. Because my name will be everywhere. I'll be the best film director there is. I'll deliver some of the best movies of all time. You'll see one day. Anyways, for the top 10, we got... For number 10, we got Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Okay, let's just get this out of the way. I love, like, the finale of a movie series, of a movie trilogy, or a movie franchise. Those are my favorite things in the world. If they do it right, I love it. And like I said, I love f final movies, and this is one of the best final movies of all time. Harry Potter and the Three Hallows Part 2 is by far not a perfect movie. It has some flaws in it, but at the same time... It delivers. If you love Harry Potter, you're gonna love this movie. And this, what this movie does, it brings justice to characters that you think you hate, like Snape. Like, he has the best redemption arc probably of all time. Like, he redeems himself so well, and you actually feel bad for him in the end. This is what the movie wanted to deliver, and it delivered wonderfully. This movie has great action, great emotional depth into it. Bro, the main character dies and comes back to life. And you believe it, like... It's because of love, and you're like, yes, I accept. And bro, this movie is wonderful. Voldemort is horrifying throughout this whole movie. And the whole, like, se like treasure hunt kind of thing, because they, like, find all the Horcruxes and destroy them to destroy Voldemort in the end. And I just love that kind of storytelling. Like, this, I love this movie so much. One reason why I love this movie even more is because how I watch this movie. If you don't know, I've actually got the chance to watch this movie in the New York City premiere. So I, I saw all the actors. I met them all. I met... All the actors, Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, uh, Alec Rickman, R.I.P. bro. All the actors in the movie, I saw them. I was so hyped. I was like, they're right there. Because I, I got to walk in the red carpet. I don't know how my dad, my dad got so lucky because he got the, uh, what is it? He was lucky enough to just look in the newspaper one day. And, and in the newspaper it said, he has a chance to win a ticket to watch Harry Potter live in the premiere for free. And I was like, you oh, know, oh, let's try it out. And he won. And he said, bring one guest. I was the guest. Let's go. <laughs> but I, I was lucky enough to watch Harry Potter live with everyone. All the actors. I was so happy. And that's probably why this is number 10. Because if if that wasn't my experience watching it, it would probably be lower. Number 9 is going to go to Inception. Christopher Nolan's groundbreaking movie. This movie will boggle your mind. This movie is insane. It's so mind-bending. It's so crazy. It's so like energetic and the storytelling and like the world building is insane. The whole idea of going into a dream, into another dream, into another dream to make an idea is so complex. But that's why like I had to watch this movie three times to actually understand the process of Inception. And I just love that. That's why you gotta, you gotta have to give it up to Christopher Nolan. Like bro, he, he went in in this movie. You could tell. The visual effects, storytelling, characters, I, but like... You feel, you feel the emotion, you feel the, the raw strength characters love for each other. I just love that so much. Number eight goes to Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Like I said, I love... It's not, it's not like a final movie, but like, it is. Because no one talks about the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull because that movie is shit. But this, I consider the finale of the Indiana Jones trilogy. What this movie does is so wonderful because I love a father and son relationship. And this brings out, you know, Indy's dad. And it's so funny. And it's so, like, action-packed, this movie. And, like, the treasure. Not the treasure, but, like, what they're looking for. Like, you're, you're so invested in this story. And you just love it. The music is great. The action scenes are so well thought out. The whole tank scene was insane. Like, because this takes place, I think, in the 1940s. I forgot. I haven't watched this movie in a while, but I just love this movie so much. Like, so, there's Nazis involved. It, the Nazis... The Nazis are also involved in the first one, but this one, they feel, like, more connected because they go to Berlin, bro, and they meet... He, Hitler's in this movie. Hitler. <laughs> bro, this movie... This movie is a whole bag, and I just love it. And, like, the whole, like, the last act, the whole, like, trials thing, I love that so much. Like, yeah, he has to go do three trials to meet the end, to get the to get to the crusade, the cup. Oh, my God. 
I love that scene so much. Now for number seven, we got Star Wars The Revenge of the Sith. This is by far the most memed movie on this list. And this, like I said, I love finales. This is the finale of the, the prequel trilogy. I just love this movie so much. This movie sets up everything that you need to know for the, for the original trilogy. And it does it wonderfully. Action scenes, insane. Visuals, insane. Bro, like, acting is eh. Especially for Anakin's part. But you could let that slide because this story is insane i love this movie this is by far like the most memorable movie on this list because like it's so quotable that's the word it's so quotable i could do it i got enact the whole scene watch you've turned her against me you have done that to yourself i'm gonna let you take it from me your anger and your lust of power have already done that you've allowed this dark lord to twist your mind and until now until now you become the very thing you sworn to destroy don't let you me. i see through the life the Jedi. I don't feel the dark side as you do. I'll bring peace, justice, and security to my new empire. Your new empire? Don't make me kill you. Anakin, my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy. Then if you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Only a Sith deal to absolutes. I'll do what I must. You will try. You might think I'm be I'm reading this off of so like a laptop or something or my phone. I'm not. I memorized the scene. I, I bro, it's so memorable. Or like the other scene where he's like, oh, Anakin, you're the chosen one. They do something with the story. So then join them. Bring balance to the force, not leave it in darkness, bro. This movie is so like iconic, bro. Honestly, it's I love this movie. It has some of the best battles, best lightsaber battles. Anakin vs Obi Wan, Yoda versus Lord Sidious. Bro, this movie went all in, and this movie introduced Order 66, which I believe is peak fiction. I think it's the most peak fiction of all anything. It's the most peak fiction event of all time. Like, nothing can beat this moment in in history. It, of, of Not just Star Wars history, but in fiction history. Anything to do with fiction, nothing could touch Order 66. Like, nothing. I don't care what anyone says. This right here is peak fiction. Because anytime Star Wars revisits Order 66 from a different perspective... It affects anyone who's a Jedi, and that's so, that's so awesome. I love that so much. Number six goes to Lord of the Rings: The Return of the King. Yes, I know another final movie. Insane, right, bro? I'm a sucker for final movies. I love them so much. This is the final movie for the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and this movie delivers. This movie is long, has a lot of endings, but I can let that slide because this has the best storytelling. This right here is like the definition of stakes, especially when Aragorn. You know, Legolas, Gimli, Gandalf, they're all there in that room. And they're like, we, we don't we don't have a chance, so we have to buy photos from time. And that's like a risk, because they don't even know photos are alive. But like, we have to let all of our, you know, all of our forces go to the Black Gate. So all the orcs could come here. Well, and they think maybe Frodo and Sam could go from this side, where all, all their orcs and, and attention to this side of the battlefield. So Frodo and, and Sam could sneak up into Mount Doom, which is one of the best battle strategies in movie history, honestly. And I, yo, like, I, oh, so good, oh my god, I love movies, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm geeking out just talking about this. <laughs> Number five goes to Back to the Future. Some say that the way they deal with time travel is kind of weird. Not because of the DeLorean. The DeLorean is magnificent and like the whole 88 miles per hour. Like, that's a great scene too. But we're talking about like the actual story, you know, like his mom falls in love with him, his dad and all that stuff. People might think it's kind of weird. But you gotta you gotta give it up for, to for Robbers and Mexicans because this is a brilliant idea and because it deals with an internal struggle because Marty throughout this whole movie he never changes he's the same character right but like, he changes everyone around him for the better because like in the beginning of the movie you see him in the living room George McFly gets bullied by Biff and Biff is still like an antagonist right and like his mom is fat and alcoholic you know his brothers and sisters have problems of their own but in the end. Because of the effect he had in the past, or the few, yeah, the past, <laughs> like he affects everything that he that he's loved, and I I love that. Like he he's still the same person, but he changed everything along the way. So I I love that. I love that about the movie. Number four goes to Rocky. Rocky is the by far the most motivational movie on this list. I love Rocky so much. Anytime I watch Rocky, the next two months I'm working out, no doubt about it. So anytime I revisit Rocky, like that's it. I'm that's the most active part of my life. <laughs> that's the most active I'm ever gonna be after watching Rocky. People say Rocky is just a boxing movie, and I have to disagree with that. I think it's more of a like yes, yeah, sure, boxing movie, but it's a romantic movie too, bro. The whole movie deals with Rocky and Adrian, and at the end of the movie, sure he loses, 
but he still calls out for Adrian because that's his new love. Like that's and I just love that. He's Rocky feels so human in those moments. Like and I just love that about him. And Rocky Rocky has some of the best soundtrack, some of the best like character development. The way Rocky has to trust in his trainer to train him. And the training methods are insane. And this is the first movie that we ever introduced to a training montage. Like, like that's done well. And I think this movie actually created a training montage, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think it does. Now for number three, we got Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is by far the best superhero movie of all time. Some may say it's not even a superhero movie anymore because it's just like a crime movie. It's basically a crime thriller movie with a guy just about to bat, just there. Batman just happens to be in the storyline. Because this movie could be, without Batman as just someone else, it would work. But it just happened to have Batman in the mix and Joker and everybody. But first, let's just start off with the acting. The acting by, is by far amazing because of Heath Ledger, RIP. Uh, Heath Ledger brings out one of the best performances of all time. And you, he has like, it's like such a thrilling presence throughout every scene he's in. And he steals every scene he's in. So you gotta, like sometimes I feel bad for Batman even being in the same scene as Joker. Because like, Joker wins every time. <laughs> the Dark Knight, bro. Another Christopher Nolan masterpiece, bro. Christopher Nolan knows how to make movies. That's why I love Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan, I think, is my top five best directors of all time. Maybe even top three, actually. I love, this the guy never misses at all. Number two goes to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Another Indiana Jones movie in the same list. I, what can I say? I love Indiana Jones. Fun fact about myself, I've only dressed up for Halloween three times in my life. The first time, Indiana Jones. The second time, Darth Vader. And the third time, I was Naruto Uzumaki. Those are the only three times I ever dressed up. Other than that, I'm wearing my plain old clothes. But yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark, another great masterpiece by Steven Spielberg. I think he does a wonderful job making movies. He's one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. I think he's one of my favorite filmmakers of all time because like he knows how to deliver a movie. He knows how to like... Like, not please the audience, but he knows how to make the audience feel comfortable with what we're watching. Because, like, like I just love what he... Like, every movie he does is low-key bangers, but, like, this this just happens to be, like, a, a better one than all this, like, mediocre one. Not mediocre, but, like, just average movies that he makes. People hate people hate the movie Terminal. I think Terminal's great. That happens to be one of his weakest movies. Terminal's great. I don't care. Tom Hanks is awesome in that movie. But Raiders of the Lost Ark is a masterpiece. And that's why I want to watch it with my cousins, because my cousins never watch Indiana Jones, which I'm so pissed off about. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Ibrahim. Yeah, yeah, you. This movie, we have to watch this movie together. We have to. We have to. Number one is Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. This is just nostalgic for me. I love The Empire Strikes Back. This movie is probably the most, like, effective sequel of all time. First, you got Star Wars, and The Empire Strikes Back, like, it's, it's, it's embarrassing to compare the two. But, like, because people like Star Wars better sometimes, but I'm like, what the fuck, why? Empire Strikes Back does everything better than Star Wars does. Because, like, Star Wars, they introduce Darth Vader, right? He's just cool. Like, he, he's, just, he just, he's just there, like a background character. But when you see him in Empire, he's so menacing. He's so tough. He doesn't give a F about anybody. He just slaughters anyone in his way. He just mind chokes people from across the, across the spaceship, actually. Or even different spaceships. That's how badass he is. That's why I love Darth Vader in this movie. And this movie, he doesn't hold back. Chops off Luke's hand. You know, the hero, you know, has stuff to lose. You think Luke's about to die, uh, bro? Han gets carbon freeze and all that stuff. It's insane. This movie. This movie makes all the heroes go to their lowest point, so Return of the Jedi could be so epic, and it does. Thank God. But yeah, yeah, that's, I love the Empire Strikes Back. The Empire Strikes Back has the biggest impact in my life because it, it's inspired me to make a filmmaking. All these ten movies inspire me to make a film. Like I love movies because of these ten movies. Thank you. <laughs> pretty much. This is pretty much a thank you letter. For these 10 movies, pretty much. Anyways, I'm gonna stop, you know, just talking about these movies. Uh, let me know your top 10 favorite movies of all time down in the comments below. Make sure to share, like, subscribe. And as always, I'll be back with another video. I'm out. Peace.